Okay, let's look at the third requirement. Valid data should be appended to the doctor table and a save message should display. First of all, we have to make sure that the data should be added, which is appended here, should be added to the donor table. So we need to save that data and make sure that it is entered. So for instance, the donor surname and email address must be present here. Yeah. So we have to make sure that they are present and a suitable error message should appear where invalid data has been used. We've done that for the email address and now we have to make sure that these two fields must be present here. Yeah? So these two fields, that one and that one, must be filled in. Basically, let's go and have a look at a command button just up here. We'll click there. We can just say finish to this or let's say cancel and we allow the command button to be there or we can go to the record operations and create a save record button uh, just to facilitate basically us doing selecting the text here yeah but we can always say cancel and just leave a random command button and then code this so that it saves the data in our case we can just carry on like this so it's a save record button next finish as you saw there, we didn't give it a name. So the name, the default name is, if we go to all, is command 14, yeah? Now, if we want to code that so that it does everything said here, all of these things, so the donor surname and the email address must be present, yeah? And yeah, we've done that already in the previous task. And then valid data should be added to the donor table. So we need to create a save button. That's why we use that command and a save message reassuring the user that the save has happened. If invalid data has been used, use a suitable message. For this, we have already entered a message for the email address. So let's see what do we need. We need a save button that will be coded in such a way that first of all, these two fields are, are present. We've already done that and that the data we should be added to the donor table and saved. A message should appear saving and a suitable error message should appear where invalid data has been used. Okay, so if let's say these are not present, we can have a error message saying that we didn't fill them in. So let's go and have a look at the save record button. Let's add another button here. So let's enter a command button and say cancel to it because we're going to code the button anyway. I'll show you the code and we have to learn that code. So basically you can see here that the caption and name, we can modify them, but we have to be very careful. And the caption is basically what appears on the button. It's save record. That's what we want to appear there. You see that it appeared. The problem is that when we right click on this and we go to build event, sometimes this does not appear and the macro builder appears by default let's say okay and we see that macro builder this is not very user friendly let's close this so this is a window superimposed on top of the our database yeah so we can just close the window here we want this type of window visual basic type of window where we will add our code when we right click here and avoid seeing the macro builder we can either choose from this window code builder this one here if this doesn't appear and it gets us straight to the macro builder we can actually convert form macros to visual basic so that we get this window here so basically if we click on it and say convert it converts it for this button here and when we right click and go to build event if this doesn't appear it goes straight into the code builder since it appears we want the code builder we click on it once and from now on when we right click on the save record the code builder will appear by default so this is if we're during the exam we are confused because let's say now this one will go straight to that yeah but if we see accidentally let's add another command button if we see accidentally in the exam uh, cancel say this 
Uh, this doesn't appear and we get this straight away because glitches like that can happen. Don't panic. Just close it. Yeah. Go to convert forms macros to Visual Basic. Say convert to that. And when we right click on the button, we go to build event. If we don't get this, we will go straight into the uh, code builder. This one. So now lots of things have happened here because we have been doing this for a long time. We can just delete all this. Yeah. Go back to it and delete this button. We don't need it. We want the save record button. Although we could have kept either of them. So now if we right click on this and we go to build event, we get this uh, choose builder option and we want the code builder. Remember, if this doesn't appear, we convert the forms convert them like that and on build event it will take you straight to this yeah you see I clicked on that to tell you where it will take you straight away but that's only if that glitch happens yeah bear all this in mind and practice a little bit on these things so we go to build event we want code builder okay and command 17 let's verify that this is command 17 it is what are we going to write there first of all the donor surname and email must be present so let's verify that we use the if statement uh, you'll see why if is null the is null function a function is written always with a function name in this case the function name is is null open bracket close bracket we want the field if that is null we want the field name so from the text box it's the best way to get it. Control C. Be careful, don't use the labels. Yeah, see label here. Use the text box. So we go and add Control V for paste, donor surname. So if that is null or is null, open close bracket. And in here we put the other field's name, which is this one. Either if any of these are Control C, so right click doesn't work on these things. Control V. If the donor surname or the donor email address is null, is empty basically, yeah, then, no, I clicked somewhere and it protested, so it says then, then, do something. So we want a message saying, please enter. So message box, MSG box, you have to learn that by heart. Open the bracket and then put a prompt within double quotes. Yeah. So say, please fill in the donor name and the donor email address, the donors. So that's pasted from earlier, the donors or surname and email address. So the structure of the message box function, open bracket, close bracket again. But within those, we put our prompt which you can see here, the structure of this thing, in a bracket, okay? So that message will, uh, will appear. Uh, so if, then, then we're missing an else, otherwise. Otherwise, what? Save it, yeah? So we want otherwise, else, do command, do cmd, dot, save, s, if we press enter, it creates a space underneath so basically if we double click so let's do it again dot if we double click with the mouse on the on the save s there it is it doesn't create the space however if we say dot s and we press enter it will pick it up but it creates that space sometimes it's not convenient so it's up to you which method you use uh, so do command save and uh, we need a message saying message box msg box so it's better to learn these by heart open bracket double quote and let's put the prompt your record has been saved close the double quote close the bracket and there you have it and we can as well
use another do command here that after we save it, it goes and it allows us to do another record now in the exam uh, to what extent you get more points for this I have no idea so it's up to you whether you do the next thing do command do cmd dot so basically you have to uh, learn this by heart go to record G go to record and then see if you add a comma you get the structure of it so the first comma corresponds to object name we want so record as record what kind of record record as AC next for instance it's giving us an example we want this one new record double click on that so we need the two commas in order to reach this one this bit here and from that bit a drop down appears and we can select the AC new record so it's better to practice this thing a lot of times many times yeah let's click somewhere else that's how it is done now we can indent these so that we can see the major operators here if then else so if that is null or that is null then a message box appears with this otherwise if it's not null yeah otherwise if it's properly being input we do the command save and message box your record has been saved after that we can go to a new record to fill in another user so to what extent you're going to use this code or how you're going to design this thing you have to be very careful so it's better to practice these things and we're going to we're going to practice with more codes yeah so that we learn them more and more so now we can indent these so press the tab button on your keyboard tab button tab button so undo that because without highlighting of course put the cursor then press the command button and then we can highlight these two and press them and this as well let's try to save this and go to form and click on it compile error block if without end if so let's say okay so we've started an if statement but we didn't end it that end is the end of the sub here yeah so we need to actually end the if statement so we go to the bottom of this press enter backspace to go there and we say end if and if the two words are separate and visual basic is good in this it helps us a little bit so we go there we save it close the form we save it open it so now we want to add a new record let's say Bill Clinton and his email will be bclinton at msn and then if we click somewhere else save record please enter a valid address so we got that message dot com yeah okay your record has been saved that's the message if we look at the design view and go to the build event we know that that's the message your record has been saved yeah that's what appeared there now what does that mean if we go to the table let's close this say yes if we go to the table with the donors and we go uh, let's put these in descending order largest to smallest so there's the one that we used we had initially up to 50 if you remember so these two can be deleted although it's not necessary to delete them yeah I'm just showing to you how to delete them yeah the records but don't delete the records don't modify these records by accident although I'm not too sure if you would be penalized for it in any case form donor new record blogs your blogs and email address blogs at gmail dot com your record has been saved we go back to the donor table and we'll find him here you see that row that we just created now some small modifications if we select the form by clicking here yeah so if we click here we've selected the form header if we click here we've selected the detail but we want to clean 
click here and we select the form then we go to format yeah or all but format is less so basically down here where it says dividing lines no scroll bars neither yeah so control box I'm just double clicking and it takes me to the next thing you see look I'm just double clicking neither so control box yes close button yes minimum maximum buttons both enabled so navigation dividing lines no navigation buttons so if we go here we save the form we reopen it we got rid of some scroll bars but the thing is that we want to get rid of this which is the navigation buttons and the record selectors that's something that you can uh, do at the end if you have time go to the design view click on the form select the form so you have to be careful about selecting the form for these to appear say no to this you see no record selectors no so then we go back to form view and there's no record selectors and there's no navigation buttons and this is our form yeah we can always move these or make them smaller etc yeah basically that will be it now in design view we don't want to fill in this to prevent the user from filling in there is a way we click on the actual text box with that we want to disable and we say enabled no we don't make any inputs here uh, but as well if we want to show the user so this all what I'm saying now can go into your evaluation as well so basically if we want to make sure that the user knows that they have to input these two fields go back to the design view get a label and just type a star in there you can copy this that in the other field as well they're not bound on anything they're just labels make sure that you're not putting text boxes which is this label yeah and move that a bit like that and the form now looks like so form view looks like this so all of these things you have to correct them yourselves this will be the end of this lesson and we move on to the double i requirement which is this one an input form to add a donation which is much more complex and it's much more uh, difficult